We live in a digital age. Through the internet, our kids are exposed to all kinds of information and influences. As a parent, you need to be aware of what they're exposed to on a daily basis and how to establish healthy boundaries. Today, Kendall and I are joined by Mandy Majors. She's a mother. She's the author of Keeping Kids Safe in a Digital World and the founder of Next Talk. Brace yourselves for some powerful conversation as we give you the tools to guard and guide your family in a digital age. You're watching The Difference. Welcome to The Difference. Today, Matt and I are joined by Mandy Majors, a mother, the founder and executive director of Next Top a nonprofit organization that provides practical solutions for cyber parenting. She's the author of two books, Talk, A Practical Approach to Cyber Parenting and Open Communication, and of Keeping Kids Safe in a Digital World. Mandy, welcome to the show. We're so glad to have you. Thank you all so much yeah. for having me. We're honored to have you. So when did you first become interested in cyber parenting? Cyber parenting? That's a big word. <laughs> it is, and I kind of had to define it when I was walking through it. It was 10 years ago. We were getting ready for school one morning, and I was standing in my daughter's closet trying to figure out what she was going to wear for the day. A very Ugh. parenting thing yes, to do. Yes, I'm, yeah. I'm not one of those moms who lay out the clothes the night before. I get it. I should be. Yeah. I want to be. Morning. I want to be. What do you want to wear? <laughs> yes. Let's go. Yeah. Yes, and I'm standing there, and I hear her waking up, and in her sweet little meek, innocent voice... She says to me, Mom, how do dot, dot, dot. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I don't share that exact question publicly because she doesn't want it out there. Mm -hmm. yeah. But what she asked me that morning was a highly sexualized question. And how old is she at this point? Nine. Nine. She didn't have a phone. For the grade. thing she asked me about, I didn't know it existed until I was a 19-year-old college, college student. student. Yeah. So you can imagine I froze in her closet that morning, and I'm glad she couldn't see my face because I was panicked. Like, you yeah. know, your mama brain is like, yeah. what has she been exposed to? Dude. Did somebody try? Like, yes. you're, you're just <laughs> swirling in a tornado. Miles. Yes. Yes. And so I had no idea how to answer her questions in kid-appropriate terms. Like, I had no idea. So I sat down next to her, and I said, babe, we're going to be late for school. Can we talk about this later? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I bought myself some time on how to answer her question. Days went by. We had conversations. I was trying to dig in. Yeah. And what had happened was a kid had watched a pornographic video at home. And at school, okay. he painted a graphic picture about what he had seen. So this was wow. 10 years ago. Phones really weren't allowed in no. schools at that uh -uh. point. Yeah. And, but she was exposed without screens even being present. And that was kind of just my moment. I went home and I told my husband like, we're missing something. Because our philosophy was, she's not getting a phone until she's 30 and we're done. We're done. Yeah. Like that's yeah. it, that's, yeah. our, that's what we're gonna do here. And that didn't keep her safe. And mm -hmm. so my solution was not right. And I had to go back to the drawing board to be like, how are we going to handle this whole thing? You can call it cyber parenting, yeah. digital parenting. Well, and it's really parenting in, in the principles of the word, guarding and guiding your kids, but in a cyber and digital age. Yes. Because, you know, yes. I mean, cyber has changed everything. There, there's cyber Monday, there's cyber dating, there's cyber all of this, and it changes the familiar into a different application. And I think it's important for parents to hear, you know, an individual that, like most of us, is like, well, we'll just abstain. But what you don't understand is it's that's not good. enough. You know, abstinence in your house is going to keep them from having it in the house, but it's not going to keep them from exposure from the world. Absolutely. And even when screens aren't present, like a conversation on the bus, a conversation yeah. at the lunch table, they can be exposed to things that for me, I felt like her innocence had been robbed. Like we hadn't even talked about Talk. sex before. Yeah. Yeah. So for me, I mean, she was well, nine. I mean, fourth grade, she hasn't, seen, she hasn't seen the film. The film. Yes. You know? and, yes. and in my mind, you know, we'll get that when we get to middle school. Like yeah. I'll yeah. approach that subject. And so for me as a mom, like I just felt like her innocence had been stolen. And I was so mad mm -hmm. and so bitter. And I had to work through that. I mean, I would love to say, oh, right away, we formed a nonprofit and, you know, yeah. I started getting right. <laughs> Next, there yeah. were lots of feelings to work through well, between and, and me and it's God. A, <laughs> it's a journey, right? Because you say this happened when she was nine. How old's your daughter now? She's 19. She's 19. 19. So you got a decade of, of kind of immersion in, into this space. And, and in that process, you've defined 
uh, what you describe as old Mandy yes, and, and new, new Mandy. Mandy. So, Tell us so about that. What's, what's the difference? What What does new Mandy say to old Mandy? So, <laughs> yeah. So when I was starting to figure out, okay, this is a big problem that we have to tackle, and what is the solution? solution. Not giving her a phone, abstaining, that's not going to... I mean, I can do that for only so long, well, and then I've got to find another solution. And I went through all these different solutions in my head, like an app that would mirror everything on their phone. You know, I just want to yeah. see everything. And it's so funny because... I look back at that now and I was like, I was so naive because they text 800 million emojis a day. Yes. You don't know no. what they mean. Mean, no. At all. And honestly, they know you're monitoring their phone. So if they want to hide something from they you. They delete it or put it in a, another album, right? Or, or an app. Yes, or they use a, Wait, they a friend's album? phone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they use a friend's phone. They'll go. Yeah. To, they will go to school. They'll go to youth group. They'll open up an Instagram account that you're not monitoring. So in the one you're monitoring, it's John three sixteen. I love Jesus. And the one you're not monitoring, it's it's, another, yeah. it's a whole new world, right? It's, and so they're smart. It's the mommy they don't are. know account. <laughs> they're smart. Yeah. And so I was working through all these solutions, and I was thinking that's not going to work. That's not going to work. And one day I was reading scripture. And it was Deuteronomy 6, 6, and 7. And I remember just being on my back porch. You know, you read the scripture all the time, but then it was lightning Hit. bolt. It was Holy Spirit. Hit different. Yes. And it said, you know, teach your kids these commands I'm giving you. Talk. Talk. Mm -hmm. On the go. Yeah. At home. Mm -hmm. When you sit up, down, when you get going up. Going to bed. Absolutely. I saw these four key times yeah. to talk and it just was a light bulb. And I thought, <gasps> Oh this. my gosh, we have to create a culture of open communication in our home. Like that is the solution that I felt like God was calling me to. Mm -hmm. A healthy dialogue where it's it's not a 10 minute conversation here and a check. It's an on the go, yeah. real time, yeah. on the drive to soccer practice, talking about the big subjects. Yes. And I just was like, this is the solution. So I started implementing that slowly. And every day I would get up and I would be like, Lord, don't let me miss the teachable moments. Like I, I don't yeah. want to sweep anything under the rug, even a little bitty question. Even if it's uncomfortable. Yes. yes. And, and when I say uncomfortable, most of the time what we want to describe as uncomfortable, we blame the kid for. Yeah. But the truth is, is we don't want to talk about it. Yes. You know, you are so spot on. It, you know, it's like, I don't want to have that conversation with you because of how it makes me feel, but I'm going to blame you for how it makes me feel. Or I have mm. something from my past that makes me very uncomfortable with this because exactly. I have baggage that has yeah. not yeah. healed or, you know, yeah. whatever. But to your point in Deuteronomy 6, I love that passage of scripture because it's so practical. Yeah. You know, when you wake up, when you go to bed, when you sit down in your room, when you, when you sit down at your table, when you're walking along the way, and what it's saying to every parent is use life to train. Yes. You know, what we do is we, we get this classical mindset of teaching where you sit down, I lecture, you take notes, and then there's a quiz. That's not training. Training is why did you do that? What were you thinking when you did that? Why do you feel like you needed to do that? And, and it's in that dialogue that you as a parent get to understand this is where my child's at. This is where they need to be. This is where I'm at. This is what needs to change. Yep. When we come back, we're going to talk more about some of the changes that parents need to consider as they navigate this digital space, because like it or not, it's here to stay. Yes. Now, if you're going to raise kids, you need to understand what happens next. Don't go away. You're watching The Difference. As the world around us seems to take a very dark turn, you might ask yourself, is it possible to prosper in every area of life, even in such perilous times? The answer is yes. Are you trusting Him to lead the way and show you what steps to take next? In Him, you have the ability to prosper, to help you grow in your faith and learn how to trust the Lord through your storms. We want to send you a copy of our inspiring 100-day devotional title, Stormproof, and a set of Stormproof magnetic bookmarks. This invaluable resource is our gift to you for your support of any amount. For your generous donation of $150 or more, we'll also send you our Stormproof Journal and a bundle of 100 uplifting scripture postcards aligned with the themes of the Stormproof Devotional. To carry these treasures and more, we're pleased to include our stylish anchored tote bag. When you fill your mind with the Word, the enemy can no longer control you because your mind is set on things not of this world. Call the number on screen or go to jhm.org slash storm. Welcome back to The Difference. Our guest is Mandy Majors. And just before we went to break, we were talking about old Mandy, new Mandy, and some things that you had to come to terms with in your life in order to help your children in a digital world. 
Yeah, well, when I found that solution in Deuteronomy 6, 6, and 7, I started implementing it, right? And I was like little baby steps and I kept praying, Lord, just give me wisdom because I don't know how to answer some of these questions, questions. in age-appropriate terms. And and one day, I, I my daughter rounded the corner and at this time, she had her a phone and okay. she had her first social media account. We do, it, we do, I recommend social media in stages, like one at a time oh. that you're teaching them and walking them through it. She had earned her first social media and when she turned the corner, I knew immediately it was getting ready to be a moment because of the facial yeah. expression. The facial, yeah, especially and, girls, they can. Yes, and you she can said- smell it. Yeah, I know, <laughs> right? You're like, oh, it. prepare me, yeah. Lord. And um, she said, Mom, I'm scrolling through Instagram and our friends went to a wedding and I clicked hashtag wedding because I wanted to see pretty dresses. And she said, this popped up. It was oh. really bad pictures everywhere, like lots of pornography. and. Old Mandy, literally in that moment, would have said, that's it, I tried to be cool Insta mom, but that is from Satan <laughs> and we are done. I would have thrown Taking away the, the phone. phone. I would have opened the trash, it. thrown it, Hashtag we're done, devil, done, devil, done. devil, devil. Yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> New Mandy didn't do that. And I knew in the moment it had to be a Holy Spirit moment that I had been praying for. I put the phone down and I looked at her and I said, I am so proud of you. Satan wanted you to see that and he wanted you to get curious and he wanted you to keep going and going and not be secretive, but you trusted me with it. And because you trusted me, you get a new app today. And that just came out, like yeah. that was not planned. And, and your brain is going, I said, what? Well, I know, right? Yeah. And, and, then, and then I reeled it back a minute and I said, but it has to be age appropriate. Like I have yeah. to research it first <laughs> yeah. to make sure you're good. But, but it was like a positive, God was teaching me, yeah. positively reinforce her when she's confiding in you. And old Mandy, when I respond in a crazy parent mode, what I do is I shut, shut down the Correct. communication. Yes. And 10 years later, I didn't really know what I was doing in the moment and what God was teaching me, but that was a foundational moment in our relationship. That night, you know, Deuteronomy 6, 6, and 7 says, talk when you're going to bed. I crawled in bed with her and I was like, babe, I'm, I'm struggling with those pictures I saw. Are you okay? And we just had this long conversation about how pornography objectifies people and how we look at people differently and how, you know, we have to protect our own heart and mind. And I said, I'm not always gonna be there, so you have to yeah. make this decision. It's between you and Jesus. Yeah. And I, we wouldn't have had any of those conversations had old Mandy responded in a fleshly way. Yeah. But I was looking for the moment and praying about it and the Lord just showed up. I mean, that's how that's, he works, right? Well, yeah. and, and I think, you know, a few things that I've taken from this conversation. One, you say old Mandy in a fleshly way, yeah. a fleshly way camouflaged in the spiritual. That's so good. In, in order for me to look righteous, I'm going to erupt on you, child, not because you intentionally did this, you, you this happened. And, you know, as parents, you know, I, I'm hearing my own self because I've told all of my kids, I want you to trust me. I want you to come to me. You know, what's rule number one? Tell dad tell first. Dad. Well, if they tell dad first and dad's like, what? You know, they're like, they're maybe. they're not going to come back you know, and tell dad. That yeah, exactly. Mark like, that off the yeah. list. Well, yeah. they'll, they'll say, I lost my phone last time I told him and I didn't do yeah. anything wrong. Like exactly. I was just out there looking at yeah, wedding pictures. I did pictures what you and... asked me to do and now I'm in trouble. Yes. You know, and, and what you have to understand as a parent is the same things that you're exposed to that you wished you weren't exposed to as an adult, your child is as well. Wow. Now, are you going to leave them isolated to face this alone? Or are you going to work with them in it? So what are some things that parents need to know that their kids are actively being exposed to? When I say actively, it's not once in a while, yeah. it's consistent. consistent. Yeah, well, I, I tend to look at this in two buckets. Like there's new things we have to parent and there's things that have been around forever, but they've shifted because of technology. So new things to parent, I'm thinking about things like social media, mm -hmm. where you know, we're the first generation of kind of raising these kids on social media. Nudes, they're the first generation yeah. taking cell phones into locker rooms, changing yes. rooms, and you know, they're getting each other caught, undressed, that sort of thing. Or taking pictures of themselves. Yes, screen, yeah. yeah. For it's been, so, nudes have been so normalized. Yeah. And they don't realize there's a boundary there. Mm -hmm. There's a, and, there's and they a, don't realize what they take a picture of at 14 will be around when they're 44. Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah. Screen addiction, YouTube, um, apps. I mean, apps change daily, mm -hmm. right? And so you can think, oh, this app is safe. And then six months later, there's an automatic right. update that adds a chat feature that you weren't aware of. So those are kind of like new things we have to parent. And then there's also 
things that have been around forever, but they've shifted because of technology. One of the big ones, strangers. Mm -hmm. You know, my mom was like, don't get in the van with the guy offering you candy, yeah. Mandy, or the yeah. puppy. You know, he was easy to see. Yes. And stranger danger. And, and we still, but, but now, strangers are in our homes oh. Correct. through the Xbox, playing with your kid on Roblox, secretly building a relationship with your kid online. Under a fake profile picture. Absolutely. Yeah. So we have mm -hmm. strangers coming into our homes, getting access to our kids while they're next to us on the family sofa. And I think sometimes we, we forget that. Yeah. Pornography, I mean, it used to be hard to get access. It. access. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's the click of a button and they have access to anything and everything in 4K. Yeah. So it, it, you know, it, we have to see the shifts that have happened. Bullying is a big one. You know, that's always been around, but now it never shuts down. So the kid, you know, when I grew up, it was like you went home and got an escape from the bully for a minute. Your home was the safe yeah. place. Yes. Now, kid may not be allowed to have social media, but he's worried, what did they catch me on video doing at school and what have they Snapchat out to everybody and they're making fun of me? So oh, it's this gosh. constant, they're making fun of me. It's 24-7. Yeah. And so, you know, all these things have just shifted a little bit that we, as parents, we need to open our eyes and be like, okay, we need to handle this just a tad bit differently here with our kids. Yeah, and in doing so, I think it's important to build a partnership with your child so that they understand, you know, like you were saying about getting away from the bully. You know, the, the, the bully in and of itself is actually the digital platform. Yeah. You know, and for your kid to feel safe saying, Mom, I don't need this right now. I don't want this right now. And you be able to say, it's okay. You don't have to have it and take it away from them. You know, you, you become the reason why they feel safe, you know, as opposed to if mom or dad ever finds out about this, I'm done. Absolutely. You know? One of the things I always tell my kids is, you know, if, you, if somebody sends you something, I don't want you to think my mom will kill me if I look at that. I want you to think, is this good for me? Is this yeah. good for my heart and mind? Will this affect my relationships? Will this affect how I look at people? Would God want me to do this? Yeah. Like this is between you and Jesus and you have to make the right decisions here. I mean, we're just not always going to be around as much as we say, want to over to monitor it yes. 24 hours. Yeah. There's no way you can. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, and in, in knowing that you can't always be there, this is where as a parent, you have to trust God mm -hmm. that he's a better father you know, for me speaking, or he, he's a better, you know, caretaker, a nurturer from a maternal outlook to your child than even we can be. Absolutely. You know, and so when we come back, we're going to talk about the spiritual dynamics of this cyber parenting, you know, age that we live in and how you as a parent can have a heavenly relationship that enables your earthly relationship to be stronger than you ever thought it could be. Don't go away. We'll be right back after this. I'm so grateful that I chose differently. I'm so happy that I chose you. I get to see you become the person God intended you to be. I'm grateful for Sanctuary of Hope, for preparing me, for guiding me. Most importantly, Sanctuary of Hope is my safe place. It's where I can lay my baby's head down and know that God has his shield of protection over us. Thank you, Hagee Ministry Legacy Partners. Because of you, my baby has a chance. Because of you, I had the option to choose life. There has never been a better time to share the love of Christ with a mother and a child than right now. When you partner with Hagee Ministries, your legacy impacts lives and transforms a nation. Call today or go to jhm.org slash partner. Matt and I are here with Mandy Majors, the founder and executive director of Next Talk and a nonprofit that's dedicated to helping parents like you guide your children through cyberspace. So we were just talking about how the old Mandy and the new Mandy, and I have to be honest with you, I tend to find myself as a mother, I go into the old Kindle where I just react and instead I should be calm, give them a space to have open communication. But you're talking about this whole 
internet and how, you know, like the digital world is 24 seven, how does a mom, maybe a single mom watching, how does she take baby steps in trying to establish some healthy boundaries? Well, I think old b responding in our flesh, it's maternal. You know, it's yes. like that mama yeah. bear that comes well, out. You're offended, yes. right? And, and the, the hard so part mad. is to make sure that your child understands, I'm not mad it, at you, you I'm, I'm mad, mad at, at this. this. That is exactly yeah. what I was gonna say, Pastor Matt. I, I have found when I have launched into Old Mandy, going back and apologizing to my kid, mm -hmm. it just creates Changes. the space. The boundaries come down. And if I say, I'm so sorry I responded that way, I'm so proud of what you did. That's what I always want you to do. Come to me Come when to me. this happens. But I'm mad that you are playing a kid game and you got exposed yes, to sexual content. That's what I'm that saying. We like should the old not live in a world not like that. Where we have yeah. to guard 24 and, seven. And, but, but when you explain that to your kids, they start to see it differently. Like, okay, wait, that's not normal that I saw that on my yeah. kid app. And it just kind of opens their eyes just a little bit to what they're being infiltrated with. The Bible says, you who love the Lord hate the evil thing. Yes. And so there's times when righteous indignation comes off as, you know, well, they're just an angry Christian or they're, they're mad all the time. And that's not it. it. It's you are so upset at this wonderful world that God has yes. created that, that sin and, and the age that we live in is doing everything it can to destroy what God has done. And, and when your child begins to understand that, they start to interpret mom and dad love me. Mm -hmm. Mom and dad are going to take care of me. I can trust them to help me make the best decision because I don't believe I have ever, you know, met a child. And, and I did years of children's ministry and still very actively involved with our young people here at the church and other places. I've never met a kid that wakes up and is like, I want to do bad. Mm -hmm. I want to do wrong. Mm -mm. They just, most of them are looking at you going, tell me what to do that's right and I'll do that. Well, and as parents too, like we want to get it right, but then Correct. that flesh comes out and that yeah. overprotectiveness. And so we're all learning. And, and I tell my kid that all the time, like I'm going to get it wrong sometimes. And I'm yeah. sorry when I do, I just love you so much. And I'm trying to do the best I can here. So this started in your home and, and now, you know, you and your family have started a nonprofit. What does that organization do and, and how, how, to, equip parents? how do parents engage and, and become equipped with it? Yeah, so we, we're we called Next Talk, and you can find us at nexttalk.org. I speak at churches. I speak at schools. We have a counseling program. We have a whole team of advisory counselors for the mental health aspect that we're dealing with that help yes. us run that part. Um, we have a video study. We do online groups, so, so parent support groups. Um, I'm getting ready to actually just start a new, it's like my third year for doing it. I get on a Zoom with moms from all over the country, and we talk through some of these issues. This is a safe space for parents to learn and, and equip each other from. Um, our, our number one free resource are our podcast. Okay. Mm -hmm. They are, we started here with a local radio show and it was so cute. We had a couple hundred listeners, which was the moms that I was teaching at my church at the yeah. time. <laughs> you know, your I mean, Bible we started as a small, yeah, your yeah. Bible study got we, on the radio. we just started as a small moms group in my church and it just kind of evolved from there. And uh, my, our church came and said, form a nonprofit, because I think every parent needs this, not just yeah. here at our church. And so our podcast now, though, they are in the top 2.5% of over 3 million podcasts. Wow. That's great. Yeah, so God has really, that is a huge. And but it's we, because you're answering a, a question that's question. being asked and a need that needs to be met. Well, and they're quick shows, like 20, 30 mm -hmm. minutes, like, I, you know, while you're folding the laundry, while you're, you know, driving down the road. They're very easy and we cover all sorts of topics. Yeah. So we have moms, dads, we have psychologists on there. We have all sorts of different to help you, equip Quick. you with practical yes. ideas on how to have these conversations with our kids. Because we're we're having to answer these big adult questions for little kids, little kids. now. Absolutely. Because yes. they're overexposed. But we have a 10 year old that she likes to watch the YouTube stuff and I've had it and most all of the time they're making down. slime. Yes. And it's you know, slime, you're like, why are you I'm, watching these kids playing with I'm glue? So, so, but you yeah. have to monitor it. So we've been trying to do like healthy boundaries, like, okay, you're not going to have more than 30 minutes of yeah. this. And I have to tell you, there's been some reluctant that she's like, I want it more. I want to watch. And so oh, you yeah. start thinking, have I got her addicted to watching these shows well, and, and that seem normal or, you know. Absolutely. And I think, you know, every, anything can be used for good and bad. Yeah, because right? there's some people be like, you hypocrite, you're against digital media and you got a podcast. Yeah, well, I, yeah. I mean, I love technology. Yeah. I'm with my college hey. age daughter. That's how we stay in touch, yeah. right? Guess that's what? Like, I don't like most television, but I'm on TV. <laughs> yeah. You know, You know, I remember when we got her first social media platform when she earned and what it. what age was that? Because parents ask us all the time. It was around middle school. You okay. know, 13 mm -hmm. is a recommended. And what I would say so is. So not five. 
<laughs> not five. Okay, just check. Not carrying an iPhone <laughs> in first grade? No. Okay. Yeah. TikTok it too? <laughs> no, no. TikTok is the worst. Mm. I, have a, I, I have to watch my bitterness with TikTok. It's one of those. <laughs> um, I always say, you know, delay as much as you can, but also don't miss your window. Okay. Because you have, I think between 14 and 16, 17, you have a majority of kids ready for it. Yeah. And here's the thing, they're gonna leave for college and they're gonna need, all their stuff is digital. They're gonna need yes. to apply for jobs Correct. online. So it is our responsibility to teach them how to use technology use for good. And not good. be afraid of it. Just like a car, just yeah. like teaching them how to drive a car. Start out little, little and then you work, work your way out. up to 70 miles an hour yeah. where they're kind of on their own doing their thing. And so I think that's really important, but you have to know your kid. Yes. So I don't believe in a magic age, like, okay, social media platforms say 13, so that's when you get it. Yeah. No. Maybe not, yeah. Are you talking to me? Are you telling me about your friend group? Are you telling me what happened in the restroom with all the girls? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, right. those are the things you wanna look for to know if your kid is digitally ready. Because if they're confiding in you, you're one step closer. One step closer. Because Do you put we put some are... boundaries on their time limit? Do you have them keep their phones in their room? I hear moms ask us all those questions and it goes back and forth where... We have to set up some guidelines. You have yeah. to, and it, I always say, your family, your choice, you get to decide, but what, how we did it in our home, no phones in bedrooms or bathrooms yeah. whatsoever. And that was a God moment as well. As I was trying to figure this out, my son walked in with the iPad and he was kindergarten when this whole thing started. My daughter mm -hmm. was nine, he right. was kindergarten. And he walked in with the iPad and I was in the bathroom. Old Mandy would have said, oh, get out of here, that thing, that like thing get out of here. Yeah. yeah. You've New got a Mandy. television network in the restroom. <laughs> yes. <laughs> New Mandy was like, oh my gosh. Because in my mind, it just clicked. God was like, nudes are gonna be a thing by middle school. How can you equip him as a kindergartner to not send nudes or not ask for nudes? And so I looked at him and I said, honey, that thing takes pictures. And I was changing. What if you would have accidentally Didn't taken a picture, a picture of mommy without clothes on? <gasps> we don't ever take a picture of anybody without clothes on. Mm -hmm. So I, God was showing me, because one of my biggest concerns was, well, my husband's biggest concerns was, Mandy, I don't want you to overexpose them. You're telling mm -hmm. me we got to talk about all the things, but we can't say too much too fast. Yeah. And I remember in that moment going back to my husband that night and sharing that story. And he was like, God is showing you how to plant seeds without overexposing, but you're preparing him for nudes without telling yeah. him too much. Well, and, and teaching him that you cared enough to let him know. Yes. You know, because when our kids find out things that they don't think we know, in, in some ways it either teaches them, I'm, I, I know more than mom and dad. You know, this, yeah. this is Adam and Eve in the garden. I'm going to be like God. Yeah. Or, you know, it, they feel like they've got a secret that they're going to keep from you. You know, neither of which is good. Parents who are watching, they want to get in touch with your content. Best way to do it. Nexttalk.org. Nexttalk.org. I want to thank Mandy for having the courage to bring this content to light because I assure you, if you are not aware of it, it impacts your household. It impacts your children. It impacts your grandchildren. Mm -hmm. If your kids have been out of the house for a long time and you are now wondering what your grandkids are doing, trust me, they're on these platforms and you need to be aware of how you can equip them to engage in a digital age and not be overwhelmed by the world. God has a plan for your child's life yeah. and he knew exactly when they would be born. It's not that they got here too late and the good old days are gone. Yeah. They're gonna be used for God's glory in yeah. this generation and I want them to be difference makers when they do. Thank you for joining Kendall and I today. We're glad you were watching The Difference.